Welcome back. This is the part of the program we call Selling Secrets. Stuff you need to know if you're in business, maybe you're an inventor, maybe you're an entrepreneur, maybe you're a business owner, you're listening on the radio or whatever. Things that are inside information that people, you know, you know what they don't teach you in school. The stuff they learn on the street from experience. And today what we're going to cover is uh, something like, how do you fulfill your orders? How do you ship stuff? We were talking to one of our inventors there, yeah. and he was invent- He was, he was uh, shipping, obviously, out of a shop. You know, but you get more and more orders. You know, you start selling to Walmart or Amazon or one of the live shopping channels and stuff. Fulfillment gets tricky. In fact, so tricky that you could lose your shirt on it. You could bank up your company over fulfillment. You know, and and I got to tell you something, Andrew. You've been spending a lot of time in our warehouse. We have a twenty thousand square foot warehouse behind yep. the office here, a couple streets over, and and you're in there getting these big, huge. We have nine shopping channel orders going out this week, huge orders, and and you were in there supervising and packing up the boxes. Where do you right. think? These guys can trip up when it comes to fulfilling their orders. Well, there's several places. I mean, you want to watch out on the size of the box, how many fit in a master carton. Yeah, so let's let's cover that. So the size of a box is he's referring to the retail box or the packing box or the right. shipping box. You know those Amazon boxes you get at the front door. Yeah. Those are strategically sized. Yeah. They're not like you can't be too small, can't be too big. You gotta make sure they're strategically sized. And then the master box, when you're selling in bulk, here's a here's a trick I did. I never thought of this. You know, we did one of our products. I said, Okay, I don't know. How many in a master box? I don't know. Put fifty in a master box. So they took me literally, nobody checked the weight. So the the fifty unit master Master box nobody could lift. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how does a guy going to deliver it? You know. Yeah, so the master box size is also important. Now, Absolutely. So you had you had also some issues on the on the pallets. You know, when we put the product on the pallets, what issues come up? Uh, things like uh, awkward sized boxes. First of all, so right. you don't want to get a weird sized box. You don't want to get too big size of box. You want to make sure it fits and the height of the the pallet. You got to make sure that there are height restrictions when you're using a forklift and and you don't want it to tumble over. Um, there's all kinds of little things where you can trip up on 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 a pallet as well. Now you also want to make sure you can be able to shrink wrap everything too. Because you want to make sure when you're shipping out a large quantity, you want to make sure it's efficient, it's easy to go, and it's safe. And uh, and those kind of factors, you got to make sure that you can just cover them all. And that that will be nice and clean, and it'll look uh, when it goes presented to the, for example, the the buyer at uh, Amazon or Evine or somewhere. They are also going to look at the quality of how it was packed. So there's a few angles you got to be careful of. So Andrew brought up a really good point. One of the things is we were actually figuring out the size of a box of a new product, yeah. and I never thought of this in my whole life and not one time that I ever thought of this. Uh, you guys, one of the guys over the warehouse, you guys supervising, he goes, hey dude, uh, you make sure the box is strategic on the pallet. And I go, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. Well, the pallet is a certain size, right? And you want to get the box, whether you pack it sideways, you know, like this way or this yeah. way. The way you pack it on the pallet, you want to use up every inch of the pallet yeah, because absolutely. every inch of the pallet means money in shipping, right? So, so we were, actually, I'd never thought of it. Customize the size of your box according to the pallet sizes so that you can maximize what goes on the pallet. That's really, really important because... I went into my warehouse. We're not doing this. We have pallets that a quarter of the pallet is unused. Yeah. Because just the, only because of the shape of the box. So we're shipping air for no reason whatsoever. So we're packing out a truck, a transport truck or something like that. A quarter of that truck has got nothing on it because it's air. So you see that video there? You see how the pallet, those boxes are. I saw the picture of the pallet the guy's carrying around. All that stuff is strategic so it fits on the pallet properly. So that's a consideration that no one ever, ever thinks of, make the size of your retail box, your shipping box, your MasterCard box strategic so it fits on the pallet and uses the, uses the pallet. Can you imagine if you made the box just a little bit too big? So it hung yeah, over the pallet because you can't ship anything hanging over the pallet, right? Yeah, then you have to cut back, and then all of a sudden you're losing the space. Correct, and, 100%. And that's right. not good. Another big mistake we made, Andrew brought up, is this height of the pallet. Oh, my goodness gracious. I, I, I actually was sitting there reading, you know, my water here. An email comes in, fine notice, fine notice, 1500 buck fine notice because my pallet was one inch too high. Think about that for a second. And I got really upset. I got upset. Why would you find me $1,500? And then they explained to me that, for example, at the shopping channels, humans aren't touching the pallets. 
It's not a human procedure. A robotic. a robotic pallet jack goes in, picks up the pallet, or I think they, they I think they take the pallet onto the floor. Yeah. Then a robotic pallet jack guy, thing shows up, like a drone, picks up the pallet, takes it yeah. into the location. No human unloads it, and all. Of course, the height mattered. The height really mattered in that situation. We caused a lot of problems because the robotic pallet thing couldn't take the pallet because right. I made it too big. Yeah. So yeah, they fine you. You don't even think of that right now. The other thing thing I want to talk about fulfilling is labels, right? Yeah. Have you ever got, you know, so you, tell, tell, tell me about the labels that go on. Well, the there's a few places where you label, of course. A lot of the uh, shopping channels, they want to have their own label on there and their own barcode. So you have to, first of all, do the individual items have to be labeled properly somewhere where they can see it. And usually it's in the bottom uh, right-hand corner of the largest face of the box. Right. That's kind of where they like it. And then after that, um, also you want to make sure that your large master carton is labeled properly as well. So when it gets shipped into the uh, customer, they can see it and they can read it clearly and say, oh yeah, this is number one of 50 boxes. And they can do it that way. I got to tell you something. There's another fine we got one time because we, you know, we didn't. The guy just slapped the item. It's called an item number label. That's the first label Andrew was talking about. So even with Amazon, right? You ship with Amazon, they want the label in a certain spot of the box. And again, right. I didn't understand why. Well, what difference does it make if it's in the bottom right hand corner or if it's in the top right hand corner? Well, again, it's the robotics. When you, you take it to these distribution centers, there's not many humans who are actually uh, touching the box. So a robot. There it is. There's that robot. Pal- Jack mover running around. We got video of. So the robot uh, needs to have the the label in a specific certain spot so that it can read it. And if you put it in the wrong spot, of course, you cause this huge problem because a pallet so suddenly can't move in the distribution center. Right. Humans have to drop what they're doing. They have to go find this thing. The robot's confused. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, the item number label on the outs on the retail box or the or the, ma- or the or the shipping box is one thing, and then the master carton box label is another thing. So you can really get tripped up when you. Fulfill Fill your shipments, right? Yeah. And it's not. I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about the kind where you, you know, sh- like, like, I guess you're sending one or two out. But all of these stores, whether it's Walgreens or CVS or Home Depot or or Walmart or Target or any of these stores, Bed Bath and Beyond. I mean, you can get really choked up in the in, in the back end of the shipping of this, and the fines are enormous. In fact, I believe they're looking to fine you. I believe it's a profit center, so they can get in there and they can slap some big fines on you. It's yeah. all money, right? I don't know what it costs to turn the robot back on and fix that thing, but I'm yeah. sure it's not 1500 bucks. They're trying to punish me to get my attention to make sure I don't do that again. And you know what's interesting about these fines? They fine you once. The first the first it was 1500 The second, if I do it the second time, they double the fine to 3000 And they keep doubling it till you get my attention. I'm seriously. Yeah. So you want to make sure you don't get caught up in the how to fulfill your orders, right? So any kind of these retailers, it's really important. One, in fact, one of the things that I told Home Depot and Lowe's, and there's these stores, I actually had a real, and, and Ace Hardware too is another one, mm-hmm. I had a real difficult time fulfilling to those guys because they don't want it sent out by the truckload because their distribution center, see what happens is these stores, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Target or Walgreens or Evine or QVC, HSN, you're sending these truckloads and pallets to a distribution center and then the distribution center figures out what to do with it. For example, in Walmart, I'm sure the distribution center then puts it on a bunch of trucks and I think they have 3,000 or whatever stores or 4,000 yeah. or whatever they got now. So so the, these trucks are sending it out to the store. So the, you send it to a central distribution center and that's why these labeling requirements are so important. However, at Home Depot, their stores are their distribution centers. Yeah. There is no distribution center for Home Depot. You got to send it to the stores. Now the trouble with that is, is it costs a lot of money to send a single pallet to each store. Mm-hmm. And that's a big trip up. There you're going to get tripped up on the finances because let me tell you something, when you're pricing it at the trade show, maybe you go to the hardware show and the Home Depot guy comes on and goes, yeah, you know what? I love that stain remover. I'll have that in all my stores. Yeah. Next thing you know, is he goes, I go, you go, wow, it's fantastic. I want to put it in Home Depot. Uh, yeah, we'll take 24 bottles in every store. Oh, 24 bottles in every store times. Um, how many stores have you got? You're starting, your eyes are starting to light up. You're getting really excited. Right up, and the guy says to you, yeah, all you have to do is ship it to my store. No problem, I'll ship it to your store. Then you find out that... Uh, yeah, you, first of all, 24 bottles of stain remover, you're only getting like uh, four bucks or five bucks a bottle. So you're only got $100 in orders. 
Here's where the problem comes and in. And it. now you're shipping it by UPS, those two boxes, for $100. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so the shipping cost chokes you. So you don't want to get caught up. So these are the important questions when you're getting involved in your product. You get important. Every one of these companies has a manual, and you almost never ask for it. Always ask for it. When you ask, first of the question, who's in charge of your logistics? Can I talk to the logistics department? And when you get somebody in logistics, say, can I have your manual? They go, wow, manual, this guy's interested. They send you the manual and read it, right? right. And before you do your pricing, because you can get tripped up in the cost of shipping, you can get tripped up in what it costs to label these things, you can get tripped up. Some guys want, uh, uh, like, what is it, uh, what are those pallets? Uh, pressure-treated pallets. Heat-treated. Heat-treated pallets, my goodness gracious. Uh, in Europe, they have, I don't know what they have over there, they got some other crazy pallets, Euro Recy- pallets. Yeah, recyclable items. Oh, my goodness yeah, gracious. Some people don't let you send wood. Now you got a problem because your pallets are heat treated. Has heat to treated, be especially heat treated. I, it's too hot. I think in I think in Australia you don't they, they don't allow wooden pallets. They can't ship wood in there, so you have plastic pallets. So you got to read the shipping manual. You got to pay attention to it, and before you do your pricing. Understand the way you fulfill your products matters. And these are the typical entrepreneurs, even guys like me with 20 years or 30 years experience, we forget. We, t- we you know, I got caught in that Home Depot deal where somebody comes to me and goes, you know, we're, 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 we're sending these things out to the stores for like $120 and the invoice is only 105 I go, what? The shipping costs more than the product costs? Yeah. <laughs> so, so we were getting, yeah. we actually, every time we shipped it, we were, we were losing 50 bucks every time we shipped an order to a Home Depot store. So, so and that doesn't, uh, you don't, you get tired of that pretty quickly. Right. That adds up. <laughs> hey, we got reorders. Uh, great. great. <laughs> so <laughs> I want everybody to pay attention to the fulfillment, figure out how you're fulfilling it before you price your product because it could chew you up and spit you out. So that's the thing about today's selling secrets, how to fulfill your product. Make sure your item numbers Make sure you pallets, all kinds of nonsense in there. But you want to research it before you price your product so you don't drown in the shipping. Because let me tell you something, it's an easy place to drown. And it's an uncomfortable hot warehouse to drown in. So you don't want to do that. There's some selling secrets on my cool inventions. Be smart. Make money. Make money.